welcome to the next episode of the microbiology tube so today we'll be talking about the extended spectrum of beta lactamase so actually we called it in the short form esbl so actually the extended spectrum of beta lactam is there so you have to be uh, very familiar with uh, this term so one is the extended spectrum of beta lactam you can see here l a c t a m lactam and next is the extended spectrum of beta lactamase enzyme so this is the enzyme so extended spectrum beta lactamase is the enzyme and extended spectrum beta lactam is the antibiotics so the third generation cephalosporins are called the extended spectrum of beta lactam antibiotics so but what does this ase mean so actually ase stands for the enzymes so any of the enzyme so that will break the beta lactam ring so that will break the beta lactam ring of the third generation cephalosporins are called the extended spectrum of beta lactamase or esbl enzyme so the examples of the third generation cephalosporins are the cefotaxime ceftazidime cefixime ceftriazone and so on so there are a lot of this third generation cephalosporin so what actually happens is that this cephalosporin is able to break the beta lactam ring of the antibiotics and if the beta lactam ring of the antibiotics is broken down the antibiotics will be no longer the antibiotics and antibiotics won't functions or it won't inhibit the bacteria so it is not capable of inhibiting the bacteria after the beta lactam ring is broken down so beta lactam ring uh, which are bacteria which are resistance to the third generation cephalosporins may produce the esbl enzyme so it is so it will produce it may produce the esbl enzymes so if the bacteria are resistance to the third generation cephalosporin so it may produce the esbl enzymes and that needs to be confined by the double dix diffusion method so here in this today lecture so i will be teaching you about the detections of the esbl enzymes so how the esbl enzymes can be detected and the method which i will follow here will be the dix diffusion techniques so this is very easy to perform and it is the economical methods and as well as this is recommended by clsi so clinical laboratory standard institute of united kingdom so it is rec it is it is recommended by them so so i'll start at first so if you see the first is the screening test and then after we will do the confirmatory test so screening tests are simply the antibiotic susceptibility types of test because you will do the antibiotic susceptibility test and if the third generation cephalosporins uh, if the third generation cephalosporin is not working or if the bacteria is resistance towards the third generation cephalosporin like the cefotaxime or the ceftriazone so the bacteria may produce the espl enzymes i repeat so if the bacteria will produce the if the bacteria will produce the uh, esbl enzyme so if the bacteria will produce the esbl enzymes so then what happens is that it will it will break the beta lactam ring and if it breaks the beta lactam ring these antibiotics won't be able to work so if the bacteria are resistance towards these antibiotics then it may produce the uh, it may produce the ASPL enzyme so your screening test is completed so in this screening test you have to perform the antibiotic susceptibility test by putting this third generation cephalosporins so but in the confirmatory test what you have to do is that you have to do the you have to take one cephalosporin dex it is the plain cephalosporin and in the next we have to take the cephalosporin plus clavulanic acid i mean to say there will be the two dicks so there will be the two dicks in one dicks there will be the cephalosporin only and in the next dicks there, there will be the cephalosporin and clavulanic acid so this if the bacteria is resistance towards the cephalosporin then we will do the confirmatory test if the bacteria is sensitive we won't have to do the confirmatory test because if the bacteria is sensitive towards the antibiotics the bacteria is uh, is confirmed that the bacteria is not the espl producers but if the bacteria is resistance towards the third generation cephalosporin we have to confirm whether the bacteria is espl or not so only the resistance bacteria are taken 
so here you can see so this is the cephalosporin this is the cephalosporin and this is the cephalosporin plus clavulanic acid suppose here suppose here we put the clavul cefotaxim and here we put the cefotaxim as well as clavulanic acid so why we have to produce the why we have to put the clavulanic acid so we have to put the clavulanic acid because your bacteria what does the bacteria will do that bacteria will synthesize the espl enzymes and this clavulanic acid is responsible for inhibiting the uh, activity of espl enzyme so the clavulanic acid will inhibit the activity of the this esbl enzyme so so what we are gonna know from this is that bacteria bacteria will seem to be resistance here you know by bacteria will be resistance here but here what will do the bacteria will produce the esbl enzymes so the bacteria will produce the esbl enzymes and this esbl enzymes will be you know inhibited this action will be inhibited by the clavulanic acid and the cefotaxim will play the role and it will kill the bacteria around here but if you see here in only the clavula in, in only the cefotaxim uh, if we if we see here so in this part what will be the, what will be the action is that the, there will be the only the clav uh, cefotaxim so the bacteria will produce the esbl enzymes and what will we do it doesn't have the clavulanic acid so it will inhibit or it will break the beta lactam ring and it will be no longer the antibiotics so the antibiotics won't work for example you can see the next figure so here is the this is suppose the cefotaxim so this is the cefotaxim and this is the cefotaxim plus clavulanic acid so what is here the cefotaxim ring is broken down and it is changed into the next product but here the clavulanic acid will inhibit the esbl activity and the clav and the cefotaxim will inhibit the bacteria and it will produce the zone of inhibition so actually what how can we confirm from it that from from this figure is that if the this you know the combined dicks should have 5 mm or more zone of inhibition than this plain one so the combined dicks so here you can see the combined dicks so if the combined dicks have 5 mm or more zone of inhibition than the cefotaxim alone it is confirmed to be esbl producer for example if it has the 1 mm of inhibition so what should it have it should have the 6 mm of minimum 6 mm of the zone of inhibition minimum 6 mm of the zone of inhibition then it is confirmed that it is the ESPL producers so if it has the fa uh, 5 mm zone of inhibition it should have minimum 10 mm of the inhibition so I mean to say that so combined decks should have 5 mm zone of inhibition greater than that of the plain decks alone so thank you guys for watching my video so if you have any confusion about this techniques you can leave the uh, leave that uh, queries in the masses in the comment box so i will try to solve that problem so if you really like my video please don't forget to like the video subscribe my channel and share the video thank you